Okay. We are live. Gonna wait for people to come in. Hello, hello, hello. Hi. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Oh boy, you're all coming in. Hi. Hello. I want I want to see dog names. Who's who's here? <clears throat> I want to hear about all the dog names, all the dog friends. Louis the Great. Love it. Hi, Venetia. Yes. Hello. Hi. We're going to get started in just a few minutes right at uh at noon. Um so you have some time, um, go grab your coffee, uh, some water, some snacks, and, uh, and we'll get started soon. We have, we have a big, this is going to be a, a packed, packed event, um, so, so we're not going to waste any time. Um, so yes, hello, hi, hello, oh boy, well hello Clark. Hello. Hi. Spring. Spring is in the air. Thank goodness. Yes. Hi, Remy the rascal. Oh, boy. I wonder what that means. You guys have, like, the best dog names and Instagram account names. <laughs> hey Clark. Uh, boots my doodle. Oh, I like it. Loaf the pup. I, you know, that's very unbelievable. Yeah, I, I gotta start getting creative with my uh, with my dog names here. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna have one more minute and then we'll get started because I want to give you guys all the information. Um, that we have here coming at you live from my house. Um, it is woof from home after all. So, okay. Hey, Jenny. Uh, hi, Trisha. Hello. <clears throat> okay. We're almost there. We're almost there. Do you like my mug? All the doggies. Okay, I've had so much coffee, you guys. It's, um, whew, we're gonna see how that works out. <clears throat> okay, it's time. It is time. Welcome, uh, welcome for, um, to Healthy Spots um, Spring Bark Socialization. I had to, you know, try saying that uh, five times in a row. Um, hi, um, my name is Antonella. I'll introduce myself in, um, right after I talk about the special promos that we have, and I don't want you guys to miss them. I will remind them, um, remind you at the end of this um, this event. <clears throat> so, let's talk about first of all. Thank you, Zwe Peak and Healthy Spot for sponsoring this event and making this you know happen and possible. Um, if you RSVP'd on Eventbrite today. Um, Zwe Peak is going to share a, a special promo with you, which is, and I wrote it down so I get it right for you guys, uh, which is 20% off in store or and online um, any Zwe Peak purchase. 20% uh, off. Uh, on top of that, um, we're offering 50% off any 10 or 20 day daycare package, um, which, you know, if, if, We'll talk about daycare later, but um, it's it's a big deal. We we don't offer you know the fifty percent off very often. Um, so if you already go to daycare, if you're thinking about it, um, this is a great deal. Um, the promo code online for the twenty percent off, if you want to go to uh, buy online, is W F H Z W. And again, and you will be um, the in store offer and. The promo code will be sent out to you by email tonight. Um, so if you want to screenshot that, um, 
but it will be sent to you via email. <clears throat> okay, great. Um, I did want to, um, I have a special guest. I didn't mention it. Um, it, her name is Callie and she's going to be also showcasing, um, how delicious these treats are. Um, so Kelly, Kelly, come here, come here. She was napping. I won't throw out. Not entirely fair, but, um, oh, can, can you see? Hi, hi. Oh, she got too excited. Um, this is Callie. This is my newly rescued dog. She's a Catahoula leopard dog, um, which apparently, uh, Jeopardy trivia for you guys, um, uh, is the state dog of Louisiana. Um, adorable dogs, um, really sweet, um, very, um, a little anxious, but, uh, I guess that's, I get a lot of anxious dogs. Um, and she is having Zeewee Peak tripe and lamb recipe. Um, if you don't know about Zeewee Peak, uh, let me tell you a few things. They are sourced and produced in New Zealand. Um, there's no grains, no fillers, no preservatives, um, no artificial flavorings or colors, which is kind of weird that, you know, people would put artificial colors in dog food, but, you know, whatever. Um, but this has none of that. Um, and this one has green-lipped mussels, which I had never heard of, uh, but apparently it's really good for joint support. So that's awesome. Uh, it's also antibiotic and hormone-free. And as a dog trainer and as a dog owner myself, I use those for treats because um, they're really easy. Hold on. They're, they're not sticky or anything like that. And they're really small, easy to dispense. Uh, you can break them up if you want to, but um, they're just really easy to like, you know, put in your pocket and, and give to the dog. Um, and I've never met a dog that, you know, didn't love them. So <clears throat> that's, that's Zeewee for you. Uh, and Callie went back to sleep. So I'm sure she'll, she'll come back later. Um, last, last bit of info. After this event is over, um, you have 24 hours to post a picture of you and your dog participating in this event. Uh, whether that means, you know, uh, you know, you can take a selfie. Um, you can also take a photo of them sort of showing body language or socializing with you or with other dogs. So take that picture, uh, post it on your Instagram, and then tag Healthy Spot at Healthy Spot um, and tag at Zeewee Pets for a chance to win a, let me get this right, a prize pack valued at $50 from Zeewee. So again, I'll remind you at the end of this, but um, it's going to be, it's, it's, it's a good deal. Okay, <clears throat> now that we're done with that, um, let me introduce myself very briefly, and then we're gonna, we're gonna move on to the meat of this event. Okay, so my name is Antonella Quirina, and I work at Healthy Spot, as you can see by my, my green shirt and the little, little spot here. Um, and I've been working at Healthy Spot for about seven years, seven and a half years. And I'm currently the services education manager, um, which I will explain what that is later. Um, so yeah, so I started seven and a half years ago and I started as a part-time, like three days a week, uh, attendant, daycare attendant, um, in our West Hollywood location um, when I was, you know, a young pup. And um, I never left. Um, and I learned so much about, you know, dogs working at Healthy Spot and I, I grew with the company and I sort of, you know, moved up and, and, uh, sort of, uh, managed several locations, seven, uh, several daycares, and then did a little bit of work in like daycare quality, uh, management, and then added grooming to my plate, um, which I am, I absolutely love and I'm super excited about. <clears throat> so I am deep deep in the dog business um, here, people. So um, hopefully, you know, I'll, I'll be able to give you guys good info. I'm also a certified professional dog trainer uh, where I'm, I'm, I mostly utilize uh, positive reinforcement techniques and low stress handling. Um, and, and basically my goal is to bridge the communication gap between owners and their dogs um, to help owners understand the, their dog's perspective 
and work from a place of empathy. And at Healthy Spot, I, I essentially do that. You know, obviously I, I help train staff and educate staff on dog behavior and dog language uh, to improve dog's safety, uh, both physical and emotional, and, uh, and to improve just, you know, their experience when they come and, and get a bath and get a groom and go to daycare, make sure they're having a good time. Um, so yeah, that's about me. Enough about me. Let's move on. <clears throat> so today, you're here to learn about canine body language. Um, so we're going to do that. I'm going to tell you why it's important. Um, we're going to go over a little bit and then we'll talk about socialization, dog parks, daycares, sort of what's the best. <clears throat> so, uh, and I have a few notes here, so just, you know, just like so I make, I want to make sure I'm not forgetting anything for you guys. So, um, why is it important to learn about canine body language? Well, let me ask you this. Why did you adopt a dog? Why do you own a dog? And I would bet, uh, good money that you adopted a dog because, um, huh, you want a relationship, right? Uh, you want a relationship with an animal, an animal that gives back um, so that, you know, it's just you can sort of add something to your life. So I think that's, you know, what, what we all are looking for when you get a dog. And how do you know you have a healthy relationship? <clears throat> also between humans or dogs, right? How do you know if you have a, a healthy relationship? Well, um, you understand each other. You feel like you communicate well. You feel like you can communicate your needs. Um, and, you know, any couples therapist will tell you communication is key, right? Because um, this is how it, you express what you need, what you want, what you don't want. Um, and without good communication, we, we don't have a healthy relationship with anybody, right? Be it our coworkers, our spouse, our family, our mom, uh, or our dogs, right? And when it comes to dogs, the, the human canine bond um, sort of dates back to about 15,000 years ago. So it's been a while, right? Uh, we've been around each other for a long time. But guess what? We, we still need to work on it, right? We still need to work on it. And our ability to understand the language of our dog will determine how well the dog is accepted into our family. You know, misreading your dog's signals uh, can really poison your relationship with your dog and it can be increasingly frustrating for you, for your family members, and can create friction and conflicts even with, within, you know, the family. Uh, and it can be potentially fatal to your dog. Um, you know, that's, that's when dogs get returned to the shelter or rehomed, um, dumped on the street even, and, you know, worst case scenario, euthanized. Um, a lot of issues that people have just stem from from not understanding the, the basic needs of the dog. Um, so, and it can be, you know, as small as, you know, peeing inside the house um, or then, you know, jumping on strangers or chewing up the furniture um, and then potentially like more severe, uh, aggressive uh, behaviors. So this is why you want to learn about canine body language so you can improve your relationship with them excuse me, um, so your dog feels safe and understood, and who doesn't want to be understood? You feel safe, you feel fulfilled, you feel like you get the reward of having a like, positive interaction with your dog, and you know, the world is perfect and everybody's happy, right? So, <clears throat> as a recap, how to improve your relationship with your dog, you want to become a good communicator or be a better communicator, uh, and how do you do that? Well, you become a student of dog behavior, dog language, dog signals. And how do you do that? Well, you practice your observational skills. Um, and quick tip, I would say, um, is to film your dog, which I know all of you have a million pictures of your dogs on your phones and you have a million videos um, of your dogs on your phone. Don't lie. I know it's true. Um, and I would recommend filming it and then rewatching it. And that's when you catch the little things that dogs do to communicate with us and with their environment. So little tip there. So dog communication, <clears throat> um, how do dogs communicate? Well, their way of communicating is varied and expressive. 
Uh, it is primarily nonverbal, using their body language, uh, and secondarily through vocalizations. So meaning barking, um, whining, and, and all the other things that, uh, that dogs do, those little noises that they make. Uh, versus us humans, our, our primary way of communicating is verbal. I mean, we just can't stop talking, right? Um, so, you know, we tend to think of dogs communicating with just like barking, you know, that's sort of how we teach children from the beginning, like this is what dogs do, woof, woof. Um, but there's just so much more that dogs say uh, before they get to woof, woof, right? And, and we tend not to notice. Um, and if we do notice, you know, we, we tend to think, oh, it's not important um, what they're exhibiting is unintended it's coincidental right uh, but it's not um, almost everything almost everything that a dog expresses uh, through their body language is on purpose um, and it has meaning <clears throat> so excuse me <clears throat> gotta hydrate okay so really quick what's the primary purpose of dog communication two things First of all, they want to avoid or uh, resolve conflict with us, with their world. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and really, short story is, um, it's a survival instinct. Um, it, they get it from wolves, and wolves being their ancestors. Um, both wolves and dogs are um, highly cooperative species, meaning that they work together. They work as a group, as a pack, um, to hunt, to obviously mate, um, and essentially to increase their sur survival, right? Uh, to preserve the pack. Um, if if they didn't, um, it would be a little harder to, to survive out in the in the wild. Um, so in any group, you know, be it a human group, a, a wolf pack, dog pack, um, conflicts will arise, right? Um, and wolves learn to either avoid the conflict, um, again, to, to make sure like everybody's getting along, um, or if they're unable to, uh, to resolve or reconcile after the conflict occurred, uh, essentially to make peace. Um, and again, it's a survival instinct, right? Because if you're, <clears throat> if you're holding a grudge, um, and you have to work with other people, um, you're not going to make it, right? You're not going to make it. So, um, so that's what they do. Um, they also uh, use language to their body language to seek out contact with us, to connect with us. And I think that's what, um, what we respond to very often, right? Um, <clears throat> okay, so, oh, I forgot. I have some, some slides for you guys. Um, let's see if that works. Yes, it works. Um, how well do you know canine body language? Uh, okay, so I, I'm just going to preface this here. Uh, this is going to be slightly generalized because every dog is different, um, you know, based on or depending on their breed, their body structure, um, you know, their ears, their tail um, is going to be different. They will hang differently. Uh, their baseline is going to be different. Um, so, you know, for example, some dogs uh, have docked tails or have no tails. Um, so you can't really tell if the, the, the tail is going up or down or, or is tense or not, though maybe if you look close enough, you, you'd be able to see. Um, but that's why you have to look at other signals to kind of put, put together uh, what the dog is trying to tell you. Uh, and then some dogs um, suck at body language. Um, they do. Um, some dogs don't know how to speak dog. Uh, or have learned to omit or to skip uh, signals, um, you know, through their interactions with humans. Maybe those those uh, those signals were punished by humans, and the dog was like, "Well, okay, I won't, I won't growl anymore. I'll just go straight to you know barking or biting." So um, so again, just we're generalizing a little bit here. Um, okay, so what are we looking at? We're looking at body posture and body tension, body positioning. Um, how they orient themselves in relation to us, <clears throat> to their environment, uh, whether they're tense or not. Uh, we're looking at their ears, their tail, their mouth, uh, their eyes, and then their, their facial expressions. Um, again, how much tension is in their face, 
Um, are they yawning? Are they sort of lip licking? Are they shaking off? Uh, and we'll look at those, um, those signals uh, a little bit later. Okay, <clears throat> so let me turn that off. Okay, so I'm gonna break it up into essentially two buckets relaxed and stressed just for you know uh to make it easy for you guys today because if we get into the nitty-gritty we're going to be here till tomorrow and i'm pretty sure you have things to do um okay so <clears throat> for relaxed that is the simplest thing everything's relaxed um yeah so um i've been paid to tell you this um this everything's relaxed you know the the body posture is going to be it's going to sort of lack tension um, the weight is going to be evenly distributed on all four paws. So the dog is not going to be leaning forward or leaning back. Just, you know, very, just, I consider those like confident dogs. Um, ears are going to be neutral or relaxed. Just sit where they're supposed to sit, not back or up or anything like that. <clears throat> tail, um, the tail is going to be maybe down, but not like tucked, not rigid. Um, maybe there's going to be a slight wag, but um, th there's no, you know, they're not going to be neurotic about it. It's just going to like hang there. Um, the eyes are going to be soft. Um, they're not going to be intently staring at something. Uh, and their mouth is going to be open typically, typically. Uh, and again, plenty of relaxed dogs have a closed mouth just because they do. Um, but they still sort of lack tension even when they have a closed mouth. Now, stressed, um, <laughs> I could do a whole thing on stressed dogs, obviously. Um, it's a whole spectrum. It goes from, you know, uncomfortable, slightly anxious, um, feeling threatened, fearful, alert, aroused, which means um, overly excited, um, and, you know, displaying aggressive behaviors. So <clears throat> what you got to remember is, <clears throat> excuse me, um, Either a dog is going to make themselves look bigger or they're going to make themselves look smaller. If they're trying to make themselves look bigger, um, they're, that's when you see dogs that are maybe alert, um, you know, tend to be sort of in the offensive um, and their weight is going to be forward. Um, their ears are also going to be forward and high up. Uh, their tail is going to be all the way up high and sometimes a tail, like if they have a long tail, it's going to touch their back, um, <clears throat> their expression, you know, it's going to be very focused on something. Um, maybe their pupils are going to be dilated. I do not recommend checking your dog's pupils. You don't want to get too close to your dog uh, like that. If, you know, if they're in a certain emotional state, that that, that wouldn't be very safe. Um, or their eyes are going to be hard. Uh, and by hard eyes, I mean like, I get think of like the Clint, Clint Eastwood uh, stare, right? Um, their mouth is also going to be closed, clenched. Think of, again, I don't know why I have this reference, but the Clint Eastwood clench, which I can't really do, but you know, we, we know we do it too, right? When we're tense or angry. Um, <clears throat> so that's if they're trying to make themselves bigger, uh, essentially telling the world, Hey, I'm a big guy. Don't mess with me. Okay. Um, versus they're trying to make themselves smaller and those tend to be the the anxious dogs the the fearful dogs they want to make themselves feel small so the weight is going to be back the ears are going to be back sometimes flat back sideways means a little unsure um their tail is going to be down tucked uh all the, if, if it's all the way and it touches their belly uh, that's a very fearful dog, right? He's really, he's trying to like hide his bottom, which is where his scent glands are. And he's essentially trying to disappear, you know, because he doesn't want to be smelled. Um, and um, their eyes are going to be sort of darting every which way, or they're going to be avoiding eye contact. Um, <clears throat> and then their mouth is uh, either going to be closed or they're going to be panting, which, you know, dogs can pant if they're, um, obviously hot, uh, but they can also pant when they're stressed. And usually when they're stressed, um, there's a lot more saliva. Um, and then it can tend to be a little curled with, again, tension. They have tension everywhere, right? Even their tongue. Um, so, so yeah, so that's the stressed, um, sort of emotional states. 
basic signs of stress. So we talked about rigid, tight body uh, versus loose, wiggly. Uh, closed mouth, again, think Clint Eastwood. Um, lip licking, and that, or like tongue flicking, I think they call it. Uh, and that can happen really quickly. Uh, I just did it, just because I'm uncomfortable. Uh, look away, uh, again, you know, it's, dogs like to make eye contact with you to connect, but if it's hard and staring and the dog is facing you or a dog is facing your dog, like head on, everything's aligned, um, that is considered a threat. It's polite to look away, right? Um, they also do a shake off. So, you know, when you see them shaking off, it's usually just like, it is a sign of stress. It can be good stress, but usually it happens after an interaction, right? After they've played for a while or after they've just had like maybe a stressful interaction or you've asked them to do something and they didn't exactly know what that was. Um, so they'll, they'll do a shake off and we do the same thing, right? We just shake off sometimes after we've had like a weird encounter, um, just get rid of that extra energy. Um, and then finally the yawning. I thought I saw somebody that asked about yawning, <clears throat> I believe, <clears throat> um, well, you know, most of the yawning that I've seen in dogs is not related to them being tired, believe it or not. Uh, yawning is a stress signal. It's just kind of like they're calming themselves. They're calming each other um, or whoever they think is a threat. Uh, and it's again, it's, it's just sort of releasing tension as well. So they're not just tired. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to review a few pictures and I'm totally going to run over, but you know, if you need to leave, leave, it's fine. Um, but, uh, okay. So a few pictures and all these pictures, I'm going to preface this by saying are of my dog Rocky, who is no longer with us, but he was a, a beautiful dog model and I had a million pictures of him and he was very expressive. So here it goes. Okay. So, um, this is sort of a before and after, um, you see on the top picture, uh, Rocky is standing, he is facing me, it's not a threat, his eyes are soft, right, he's connecting with me, uh, his mouth is open, his ears are sort of hanging where they're supposed to hang, um, and he looks pretty happy, right? Cut to two seconds later, the cat decided to make herself comfortable, that black thing is a cat, by the way, uh, I can confirm that, um, the cat decided to make herself comfortable, Hence, the dog is uncomfortable. He immediately sat down. Um, his ears went back, his mouth closed, um, and he's looking away. And he's looking pretty miserable. Um, so that's a very quick shift. It happens literally in a matter of, of like a second. Um, but, but that will tell you, okay, he's, he's not comfortable with sort of the decrease of distance between, between them. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so... Another picture of Rocky, relaxed, right? Nothing to it. Mouth is open, eyes are soft, ears are hanging out. Um, this is a relaxed dog, for the record. Okay. Um, relaxed, mouth is open. However, a little alert. He's on his way to being alert. The ears are a little up. He is focused on something. He's looking at something, right? I don't remember what that, what that was, um, but... He's also posing, maybe. Maybe he's just posing. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so so that's, you know, I, I would look and see what, what he's looking at here just to make sure that, you know, there's no squirrel running around. Same thing with here, and this is like a level above. Mouth is closed now, and you see how his eyes are like focused on something, and his ears are still up, and he's sort of like a little higher up on, on his body. Um, he's alert. He's looking at something on the beach. What that is, I don't know. Um, but this is a, a sort of, for you, a good moment for you to look behind you and see what's there, right? Because um, you don't know what could happen next. Okay, next one. <clears throat> we talked about panting, right? So the ears are back. Yes, I know. Um, is he stressed? No, I think we just hiked above Griffith Observatory it's a hot day, um, and I just splashed him with water, and he's, uh, he's hot. That's a hot dog. Um, you see his tongue, he's panting. Is it stress? No. Um, he's hot, 
Uh, see how the tongue is just like hanging out. Um, there's not really much tension to it. Um, and he looks pretty happy. <clears throat> so again, you gotta, you gotta find the difference here. Okay, moving on to stress. All right, there's a baby in the picture, right? There's a baby. Babies are weird. Dogs don't know where babies are. They smell weird. They are loud. Um, it's a new addition to the family. Look at his face. He's sitting down. His ears are back. His mouth is closed. He looks tense. And um, if you look at the where how his body is, like how he orients his body, it is not. He's not facing the baby. He's facing sort of off, off center, like away from the baby. And he's but he's keeping his eye on the baby, right? Because if if he was facing the baby directly, um, that would that would make me him even more comfortable. That you know uncomfortable i'm sorry um and that would sort of be seen as a threat okay moving on neighbor's cat again being a cat taking up space <laughs> he just can't face that cat he just can't do it um he's facing away he's looking away his ears are back his mouth is closed he seems to be saying like what i just want to get home guys i just want to get home and have dinner i i don't want any trouble with this cat Please help me out here, human, right? Okay, same thing with the baby. This is several months later. Um, he's more comfortable, you're right. He, he's, he's, he's okay with the space. However, see that tongue? Yeah, that was a video and I had to pause it because uh, I hadn't noticed it. Um, it's a sign of stress, right? Baby's getting a little too close. Um, so side note, if you have a baby, or a young child in your home with your dog, never leave them alone, okay? Um, you never know what dogs can do. Babies, kid, I have two kids. They are very friendly, too friendly. They wanna hug the dog and all of that. You, you know, you, we gotta respect the dog's space, right? Um, so uh, for everybody's safety, you know, make sure that you monitor that. Final picture, and this is, um, well, this is the softest dog that I've ever seen. Uh, he's just melting into my hand here. His mouth is open. He's smiling for crying out loud. His eyes are soft. Um, yes, his ears are back. I will give you that. Um, I don't have an explanation for it. He was just, I think, hanging back and his ears were there. He's leaning into my hand, right? And this is another point I want to make. We are hugging. We are a hugging species. We love to hug, right? Do dogs love to hug? No, they do not. They like to cuddle sometimes. Um, they do like body contact. Hugging, not so much, right? So this is something that, you know, we have to negotiate with them and we have to be able to see, okay, I is this dog leaning towards me or <laughs> leaning away from me, right? If he's leaning towards me, that means he wants contact. If he's leaning away from me, he's like, I need space, right? And most of the time, they're not going to do anything. They're going to tolerate us because they're very good at tolerating our shenanigans. Um, but, you know, that's something that um, you have to be aware of. Okay, totally running over, um, but that's okay. Okay, socialization, really quick. Uh, you're with, still with me? Okay, good. Um, what it is, what it's not. Um, what's, what's socialization? A dog being socialized is a dog that's comfortable um, around different stimuli. And by stimuli, I mean things or events that happen around them, right? A truck drives by, a bicycle, kids, um, skateboards, men with hats, men with beards, men in general. Um, dogs are a little afraid of men. Um, so that's what socializ socialization is. Uh, excuse me. We live in an urban setting, most of us, it's just increasingly chaotic and loud and weird smells and there's people around and dogs and cars um, and dogs have no idea what any of this is, right? Um, so we have to sort of like help them acclimate, right? Um, the ideal window of socialization is between eight and 16 weeks of age, um, which, you know, I know you're gonna ask me, that's great, Antonella. Thanks for that information. I just adopted a five-year-old German Shepherd. Did I miss the window? And I would tell you, yes, yes, you did. However, um, it's never too late. 
it's never too late to keep learning. Um, and it's never too late for your dog to keep learning. It's just going to take a little bit more patience, a little bit more work. Um, and you'll have to be a little bit more thoughtful, reach out to a professional, um, to sort of help them acclimate. Um, cause they may have had some negative connotations and negative experiences with things. So we'll have to like reverse that process essentially. And, and that can take a while. Um, but anyway, that's that. Um, what is, what it, what it is not, what is not socialization? Um, well, it's not playing all the time. We have a lot of people, uh, who come to our daycares and, and are a little concerned because their dog isn't playing all day. Um, and now I tell them this, um, dogs, um, as puppies do play, you know, they're supposed to play, um, as dogs age and become adults, they're going to play less, right? Um, things that I enjoy doing in my mid to late thirties, um, are not the same things that I enjoy doing in my early twenties, right? We, we change, we, we have different needs and it's the same for dogs. So <clears throat> don't worry about that. If your dog isn't playing at daycare all day, as long as they're comfortable in the environment, as long as they're not having like an emotional breakdown and lashing out at every dog that passes by, um, they're doing great. Okay. So, um, let me talk about dog parks, daycare. Oh, I'm in so much trouble. I'm, I'm running over, but it's okay. Um, so dog parks, um, are dog parks good? Some of them are, um, you got to find the right one. Uh, you got to do your research. Uh, first of all, look for clean dog parks, um, dog parks where people are engaged with their dog, they're monitoring their interactions, right? It's not a free for all. Um, they're calling their dog back. They're playing with their dog. Um, if you see people just standing around on their phones, drinking coffee and completely ignoring their dog for half an hour, um, run away, run away. Um, cause it's dangerous. Look at the play styles of the dogs. Um, are they in sort of playing nicely? Are they taking breaks? Cause that's good. Um, are the, you know, their people calling them, um, and, and monitoring their behavior again. Um, if you see fights break out, obviously <laughs> don't go there. Um, if you see dogs bullying other dogs, if you see dogs ganging up on one dog, um, you know, those are all signs that, you know, those dogs are not being monitored by their owners. Um, so you have to be an advocate for your dog. Um, and you know, if you see, now that you know everything there is to know about dog body language, um, if you see any signs of stress or discomfort or your dog is being, is overwhelmed, walk to your dog, leash him up and walk away because it's not worth it, right? If they're not enjoying it, if they're not having a positive experience, then what's the point? right? Um, so there's that. Uh, and then if you have a, a recent rescue or a puppy, obviously, you know, they have to have all their shots. Um, but I would wait, I would wait several weeks or even several months until you take them to, to a dog park. Um, just, you want to make sure that they acclimate really well, uh, to your household first, you know, adoption is a big deal. It's a big transition for a dog. Um, and then you, you want to be able to bond with them and teach them their name and teach them a good, strong recall, right? Um, and work with a professional dog trainer if you need to. Um, and that's it for dog parks. Daycare. And we're almost done. Daycares. Um, so I've been working in daycares for a long time. Um, and I'm going to talk about Healthy Spa because um, that's what I know. Um, so daycares are clean, you know, like that's, that's a plus. And at Healthy Spot, we are... Well, I am a neat freak. Um, by extension, my daycare staff are neat freaks as well. And we, you know, the dogs are vaccinated, obviously. We, we check vaccinations on all the dogs. Um, we have strong cleaning policies in place. Even before COVID, we were like OCD. Um, so, so no worries about that. Um, the dogs are constantly supervised by trained, educated staff. Um, we do temperament tests on every dog that comes in. We just make sure that they're comfortable around other dogs, right? That they're social enough um, to make sure everybody's safe. Um, and then the benefits are, you know, it's good for your dog to be away from you because um, it's good practice. If you have to go out of town and you have to, you know, board your dog or they have to go to a friend's place and they've never left your, your side and they've never left the house before, you're going to be in trouble, right? 
because your dog's going to freak out. Um, so it's good practice, you know, to just get them into that routine. Um, it's also good for them to build relationships with others. Now, I know that we all want to be the only person in our dog's life, um, but it's healthy. It's healthy. It's stimulating for them. Um, it's, you know, there's enough love to go around. Um, so why don't you open up your dog's world um, so they can have friends, canine friends, they can cuddle with daycare attendants um, and then come home and still love you like, you know, like you're their, the love of their life. That's the beauty about dogs, right? They have so much love. Um, so yeah, and then the, the last piece, which is my favorite, is, you know, our staff, is they're going to be advocates for your dog. And they're going to be that extra pair of eyes because we do health checks every day. Every time your you know, dogs come in, we, we're going to do a full body check. And typically, we're the first ones to see if something's off, you know, whether they're, they're not, they're a little under the weather. Uh, we find a new mole or a new lump. Um, and then we'll, we'll tell you guys right away that we noticed something. Um, so, so that's my favorite part of daycare, honestly. Um, so yeah, um, my suggestions now in terms of this pandemic, I have to mention it, um, is look, we've all been at home or quarantined. We've adopted dogs. Our dogs have been with us for 24 seven. It's going to be a rough transition, right? Whether we go back to work or we decide to take them back to daycare for whatever reason. Uh, we've seen a lot of dogs coming back and having some issues with the transition. My advice for that is start now. You know, even if you're still, you know, 100% at home, start now. Um, take them uh, and then start slow. So I would say half days, so three to four days a week. I'm sorry, um, three to four hours a day, one to two days a week. Three to four hours a day, one to two days a week. Start there. And then check in with the staff and ask for feedback, how their dog is doing, right? Because we want to keep it positive. Um, be regular. Uh, so bring them on the same days so that hopefully they they create their own play group with dogs that they know. Um, and they get into that routine, right? You want to sort of s slowly, ch gradually change the routine. Um, and then increase the visits gradually, depending on how it goes and how he likes it. Um, so that's, those are my tips for, for, uh, for coming back to daycare after a while. Um, oh boy, I think that's it. Um, <clears throat> okay. So like I said, I have some reminders for you regarding our promo. Um, okay. So speaking of daycare, we have 50% off 10 or 20 day daycare package. Um, and that will be sent to you in an email if you are as repeat on Eventbrite. Um, great deal. If you go to daycare already, you know what a great deal that is. If you don't, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? You know, if you have a small dog, small breed dog, I don't want to, we can't, we can't, unfortunately, we can't take like puppy German Shepherds, although I wish we could, uh, but small breed dog under 30 pounds, um, give it a go. What, what are you waiting for? Go, go now. Um, and um, yeah, so there's that. There's, you're going to get the 20% off in store and online Z we peak, uh, purchase promo. Um, and that's the code for online. Okay. And then, uh, don't forget to post a picture of you and your dog, honestly doing whatever you want to do. Um, socializing, participating in this event, um, showing us some body language that you've noticed. Um, and, and then tag, post it on Instagram tag at healthy spot tag at ziwi pets and you have 24 hours and you will enter for a chance to win the famed ziwi prized price pack uh valued at 50 dollars um so do it thank you so much um and i had a lot of fun this was my first time doing an instagram live and I, I had a lot of fun. I'm super excited. I hope I get to come back. I know everybody says that. I, I do hope I get to come back. Um, if you have more questions or if you want me to talk about other stuff or get dive deeper into this, um, I could talk about this all day, you know. So DM us and then uh, they will get the message to me and, uh, and we'll see what we can do. Um, thank you so much, everybody. Um, I, I, had a, I had a great time. I had a great time. I hope you did too. Um, and I wish I could see all your dogs, um, 
maybe if you bring them to daycare, I could. Um, okay. All right. Thanks, guys.